Hello and welcome to TI's Precision Labs, an online curriculum for engineers. You are watching part of a series of EMC videos for isolation, covering a general introduction to the categories of EMC. You can learn more about EMC testing and troubleshooting EMC for isolation at www.ti.com forward slash precision labs. This video will answer the following questions. What is EMC and why does it matter? Which EMC standards are required for my design? How are emissions and immunity different? And what are the categories of EMC testing? Why does EMC matter? EMC describes a device's potential to create or respond to interference in an electromagnetic environment. Electronic circuits act as potential receptors to detect electromagnetic interference, or EMI, and planning and designing for electromagnetic compatibility early in the design process will save the difficulty of troubleshooting or fixing EMC issues later. All electronics produce some level of electromagnetic field when operating, which can cause interference in the operation of other electronics. There are many potential sources of electromagnetic compatibility issues, including power lines, electronic circuits, cell phone transmissions, electric motors, and even component-to-component -component interactions within single-circuit designs. Because there are so many sources of electromagnetic energy, Regulatory boards have established standards of compliance for all electronics to minimize risk of interference. If you are designing a system intended for commercial purposes, there are specific EMC requirements that will need to be met. The FCC and IEC regulatory organizations are some of the most commonly known standards bodies for regulating EMC requirements. And it's important to note that there are different standards requirements of EMC for each end equipment and for each region, so take the time up front to understand the EMC regulations your end design will need to meet. You can determine the standards and tests your design is required to meet by visiting the regional standards body websites or referring to the relevant international and equipment standards. IEC standards are international standards and are considered harmonized standards in that they typically include regional requirements. By understanding the sources of electromagnetic energy in your design, and the response of receptor or victim components in your system, as well as the paths that couple them, you can optimize your design for required EMC performance levels and for EMC performance testing. EMI stands for electromagnetic interference and describes the disruption of proper operation on an electronic device caused by an electromagnetic field generated by a different device. While EMI describes the disturbance, the source of the disturbance is electromagnetic energy which is coupled from a source to a receptor or victim through one of four categories. Conducted, inductively coupled, capacitively coupled, and radiated. These categories are tested through EMC emissions and immunity testing. To be EMC compliant, emissions must be low enough to avoid causing EMI disturbances to other devices in the environment, and immunity must be high enough to avoid disruption in operation due to EMI from other sources. Once a device is tested as EMC compliant, EMI should no longer be an issue during operation. EMC consists of two types of tests, emissions and immunity testing. Emissions is the generation of unwanted electromagnetic energy that a device or system produces during operation and is caused by high frequencies. Immunity is the ability of a device to operate in the presence of electromagnetic interference without resulting in unwanted errors. Because all electronic circuits radiate some level of energy that have the possibility of radiating or conducting unwanted energy, steps must be taken in design to minimize emissions and increase immunity. Emissions may be more prevalent depending on the architecture of a device. For isolated components, integrated isolated power solutions require close evaluation of emissions due to internal switching while digital isolators do not typically contribute significant emissions. Because of the high frequency switching used in integrated power and signal isolation devices, long cables in the system or larger PCBs could behave as antennas and pick up this noise. To solve this, one can implement common mode chokes to capture the unwanted noise and steer it to ground, operate at lower power supplies, use filters, or use PCB layer design techniques to reduce emissions. Ultimately, the amount of emissions measured will depend on PCB design and test setup, and for this reason, good layout practices to separate potential interactions, well-managed power supplies, minimize current loops, and understanding potential sources of emissions will help to ensure that at circuit level, possible disruptions are mitigated. EMC measurement for emissions includes both conducted and radiated tests. 
Radiated emissions describes the unintentional energy that escapes from the component or system in the form of electric, magnetic, or electromagnetic fields. The permissible levels of radiated emissions generated by an end product are regulated by numerous governing bodies, and this table provides a view of some of the most common standards for a given product sector. Commercial products must be carefully designed to minimize the amount of EMI produced during normal operation. Conducted emissions describes the unintentional energy carried on the power lines or attached signal lines. When conducted emissions are coupled into nearby conductors, they often result in unwanted noise or operational errors of EMI within the system. Equipment is classified as groups one and two with delineation between general purpose and RF specific applications. Additionally, each group is further placed into two classes. Class A equipment is for commercial use and class B for domestic. And each group and class standard includes conditions of frequency, detection, and test methodology. Immunity is measured through continuous and transient tests. Continuous tests include conducted, radiated immunity, and simulate interference over a sustained period of time. Transient tests include EFT, ESD, and surge, which simulate shorter bursts of energy and disruption. Radiated immunity simulates the ability of a device to function without disruption when exposed to different external electrical field sources, such as from a cell phone or a router. These disturbances are induced in an RF field in the range of 80 MHz to 1 GHz and are defined by IEC 6100-4-3. Conducted immunity simulates the device's ability to function when exposed to disturbances on the power and signal lines during normal operation, when disturbances occur in the same power network or on shared power lines. Sources of disturbance for conducted immunity might be capacitive or inductive coupling, and disturbances are induced through an RF field defined by IEC 6100-4-6. EFT quantifies a device's response to high voltage and high frequency electrical fast transient events that happen in shorter periods of time. ESD or electrostatic discharge can affect conductors and exposed parts if they come in contact with human operators during operation or maintenance. And surge quantifies the response to significant high voltage events, such as potential lightning strikes that can couple indirectly through power lines. The IEC transient immunity testing is used to measure the operational response of a device under these three primary categories of transient immunity. It's important to note that there's a difference between system and component level testing. System level transient immunity testing emphasizes the types of transient events that may occur in an end systems operation, and they're typically not representative of the events seen directly by a component. For this reason, transient immunity testing for components and systems varies significantly with system-level IEC testing demanding much higher test voltages than component-level tests. This means that for a system-level designer, you must account for component-level limitations within the design. Because isolation devices serve most commonly as safety and protection functions, many component manufacturers provide additional testing for isolation components under the system-level IEC transient immunity test conditions as a means of providing added confidence to the system designer for EFT, ESD, and surge voltage. EFT, or electrical fast transient testing, simulates the switching of inductive loads in the real world, such as interruption of inductive loads or relay contact bounce. The tests performed inject a specific pulse profile of defined duration and amplitude into power, signal, and earth wires of an isolator, either through direct or capacitive coupling. There are different profiles of EFT pulses for different standards. The pulse waveform is defined by IEC 61000-4-4, using the pulse profile shown here. Isolators with poor EFT performance may exhibit bit errors, reset, or damage to surrounding hardware. ESD, or electrostatic discharge, is the transfer of charge between two objects that are at different potential, and it's caused by contact or an induced electric field. Surge testing is used to verify a device immunity to very high voltage impulses over a short period of time, and it's required for isolators. Surge events can result from power faults, switching from reactive loads, or indirect lightning strikes. For isolators, the surge waveform is defined by IEC 61000-4-5, and the amplitude of the test voltage is determined by the isolation rating of the device. Note that passing a surge test at levels greater than 10 kV has been widely used as the gold standard for achieving reinforced isolation. Though system level standards allow for lower values of surge capability for systems with lower line voltages. You can learn more about high voltage reliability and testing for digital isolators in the TI white paper 
enabling high voltage signal isolation quality and reliability, or by watching the video series, What is High Voltage Reinforced Isolation? on TI.com. This concludes a brief introduction to EMC. We've discussed a general introduction to emissions and immunity in the system and the role of standards testing to ensure EMC compliance. EMC describes operation in a shared environment with respect to emissions and immunity. There is a set of minimum requirements that must be met by all commercial systems, which include emissions and immunity testing, and understanding the origins of emissions early in your design process will help to manage for best EMC performance, saving time and money in the development cycle. Emissions describes EMI contributions and are tested through radiated and conducted emissions testing. And immunity describes the response to EMI and includes conducted and radiated continuous tests, as well as transient tests for EFT, ESD, and SURGE. For more resources on EMC, please visit www.ti.com. Please continue watching to take the online quiz. True or false, all electronics, including digital isolators, produce some level of emissions. So all components must have emissions data that meets IEC emission standards. False, while all electronics do produce emissions anytime an electric field is present, for most digital isolators, the level of emissions is negotiable, and emissions data is typically not necessary to meet IEC standards at a system level. For isolators with integrated power, emissions become more significant. For this reason, manufacturers will often provide emissions test data for isolated power devices. Why are electromagnetic emissions a concern for isolated integrated power devices? High frequency switching is used in integrated power and signal isolation devices, so long cables in the system or larger PCBs that can behave as antennas can pick up this noise. For details on implementing common mode chokes to reduce noise, using integrated power and signal isolation devices, you can read low emission designs with ISO W7841 integrated signal and power isolator on www.ti.com. To meet system level IEC transient tests, are isolation components required to be tested at system level transient requirements? No, component level transient testing does not guarantee that a system will pass IEC, ESD, or surge testing. This must be planned for and designed at the system level. Using components with higher ESD and surge ratings may help to provide added confidence to the system designer by minimizing contribution to EMC transient test issues. Thank you for watching. You can browse additional isolation resources at www.ti.com forward slash isolation.